morning welcome to uh, seaside allotment my name's steve and we're just going to go and take a look at jenny's plot it's been exactly a month since the uh, last tour so let's have a look round so here we are and uh, i guess the first thing to mention is the uh, globe artichokes which a couple of days ago were completely covered with black fly but uh, I tried a little bit of uh, pyrethrum I think it is which is an organic insecticide and they're absolutely clear so uh, that worked to treat and uh, one of our friends is really keen on globe artichokes so so that's really fortunate and there's just a bit of an overview of the plot and let's just uh, have a quick look round. I turned away for a couple of minutes and that vine weed grew. So I just pulled that out of these apple trees, which are badly in need of a prune, but uh, unfortunately we didn't get the plot in time to do that. So uh, that's a job for next year. And this generally is a fruit border and uh, there's a really nice big space here which is just crying out for a fruit tree to be planted in autumn so uh, we're thinking cherry or williams pear one or the other and uh, similarly this uh, hedge is pretty uh, desperate for a good cutting i uh, might give that a go later on generally speaking this border is slightly out of control with weeds I've kept it un in control with strimming but uh, it really needs a renewal of this this fabric and a deeper mulch um, so I shall be doing the same here that I did on Jenny's plot uh, which hopefully will work really well so looks like a really nice crop of apples on here so I'm really excited uh, this tree single rootstock two varieties of apples so uh, one of them is discovery which is really exciting so yeah really good really happy about that so this bed here has got some peas that i just popped in down the side here but mostly it's a squash bed so i've got a really nice crop of courgettes already we've had oh i don't know a dozen courgettes off here and of course as soon as you pick a courgette there's another courgette ready so there's already at least a courgette per plant ready for picking so really excited about uh, getting on with that and here we've got our butternut squashes and we've got six of those and we squeezed in a cucumber at the uh, end and i'm pretty pleased to see that first cucumber so that is going to be in my salad today which is quite interesting because the cucumbers in the greenhouse are not even ready yet but uh, that's good the beans got a bit of a battering with the winds most of them seem to be throwing up a little bit of new growth um, and some of them are starting to climb so I'm pretty pleased about that I can always pop in some extra beans um, if really necessary you know, like these two perhaps I've got only three or four beans at home just uh, sitting on the patio uh, waiting to be planted And these beans are also doing nicely. I keep having to tie them in though because they don't seem to be that good at starting to climb. Um, but anyway, there's a, a big variety of different um, beans on here. I've just sort of muddled them all up. Um, there's at least four different varieties. So at least one of them should be really successful and if all of them are successful we'll be picking beans all day long and uh, giving lots away 
So these peas are delicante, I think. Uh, they're a purple potted uh, pea, sorry. And uh, they look quite attractive. And it's certainly easy to, to see them for picking. Um, I've tried tasting a few. To be honest, I'm not overly enamoured with them. Um, the uh, green potted varieties on my plot seem to be much tastier. So that's the most of the peas anyway, and beans. And then we've got lots and lots of onions. Three beds of white onions. Some of them have got red onions, just one strip down the side. And apparently, not having grown onions really before, um, our site gets quite a lot of uh, problems with onion fly. So I do, I have been watering these with uh, nematodes and in fact I'm watering them again probably tonight or tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. Um, so they get a water every month uh, with nematodes so we'll see whether that's more successful. They're planted a bit late, you know, so over a month late, so that's why they're all looking quite immature. But they are starting to come on now, so that's quite good. And these are the red onions that we've got here. And uh, the odd one of these is going to seed. But uh, generally, they're doing okay. And then I've got some more climbing beans here and then two rows of broad beans so my broad beans on my plot I've just finished I've just pulled them all up um, so we've got a fridge full of uh, broad beans for this week and I suspect that these broad beans will actually be ready uh, by the end of the week so we'll actually have got continuity of supply which is pretty impressive given my <laughs> poor planning skills generally so I'm quite excited about that and then these should keep us going until these are ready um, because these are just starting to flower so I've had a problem on this bed like everybody with black fly um, in the tips I have pinched the tips out of these because these are well on but these are quite immature still so I didn't really want to pinch the tips out of these so instead I did spray these with the uh, that organic insecticide um, and that seems to work fine again so I think I'll use that same strategy in the future pinch the tips out once the plants are mature but uh, spray if not so any advice if that's not a good strategy in the comments please would be really appreciated so these are the potatoes which are all up now some of these are actually starting to flower which i would have thought indicated from what people have told me that they're ready to pick but they've only been in the ground for a very short amount of time so i did dig one up experimentally and it only had tiny potatoes on it so they're definitely not ready to pick um, which is all slightly confusing. Maybe it was just because they were sown late, um, or maybe they've just put on too much top growth and so they look really mature, but the actual potato tubers themselves aren't. I'm not really sure what's going on, but nevertheless, I shall just leave them in the ground until um, the, uh, the tops all die back and uh, see what we get. These were, these over here, which were King Edward, well, these are Charlotte actually, just to say, and these are Sapomira. Um, so the Sapomira have taken much longer than the Charlotte to come through, but they all look fairly healthy now. These are King Edwards, and these were planted last. So these have only been in the ground probably for six weeks or something, but I mean, they've just gone absolutely crazy. Um, so I haven't tried digging any of these up to see how they're doing because really these haven't been in the ground very long at all. 
so my experience is uh, showing through so here I've got another few squash that I've squeezed in I can't actually remember what variety these are but basically they're uh, an alternative to butternut squash that apparently do well in weather that when butternut squash doesn't so basically they're a hedge against the butternut squash failing uh, these plants should succeed I popped in a few um, tomato plants here on this perimeter um, just because they were going free on the allotment and that they're absolutely beautiful I had some of them last year and they've been grown from seed so this should be this is beautiful this year although last year I grew them in the greenhouse and this year they're outside which is why they're not looking so good because they really did get battered by the wind but they do seem to be recovering okay so what next so the brassicas are doing great probably these are the sprouts and they're really chafing to uh, get out of this net I had to put this net on because of the pigeons and I'm wondering now whether the pigeons will actually attack or eat rather uh, such mature plants and if not then I might take the nets off I'm not really sure the curly kale is doing very nicely as well let's get out the shadow get my shadow out of the way um, although the plants are very low the ones on my plot are twice this height and were planted about the same time so I don't know what's making these hug the ground quite so much but uh, anyway they look nice and then I've got quite a lot of purple sprouting broccoli coming we're picking this every other day at the moment and uh, it's replenishing us with more heads than uh, than the previous day you can quite see these but uh, that's pretty good and the lawn keeps on growing and I was hoping to cut it this morning but it's there's too much dew on the ground so over here I've got some purple sprouting broccoli a later variety uh, which needs a bit of watering it always needs watering because it really should be in the ground now I have nowhere to put it so my th idea is to plant it in some of these paths um, so these paths are, and are probably not strictly necessary I can water from the edge and um, you know at a push I can weed by walking like that which means I could plant down the centre here and of course then once these um, onions are out of the ground there'll be plenty of room for the plants to continue to grow so that's my current plan um, in fact I might even do that today just planting the paths so if I plant in all of these paths I'll have plenty of space for all of the brassicas that are currently in pots and then uh, this will be a winter brassica bed and then I can interplant those brassica um, so where the onions are I can put um, something to overwinter I was going to say garlic but of course I don't want to put garlic after onions so I shall have to figure something out I will put my garlic where my potatoes are oh of course I can put beans where my onions are so this can be my overwintered uh, bean bed uh, broad beans so I think that is the end of the tour lots of things that are still slightly mysterious to this newbie gardener and uh, plenty of things still to learn but I'm pretty happy with the plot and Jenny is too and Jenny and Robin have been down here 
a few times now and Jenny Robin absolutely loves playing on his lawn and uh, so that's been a big success and so overall I'm really pleased with this plot and I'm really pleased to be um, helping Jenny manage it and I'm really looking forward to uh, planting it the way that I actually want to plant it next year uh, when I actually get time to do everything properly but given the constraints I think it's turned out pretty well I'm pretty pleased with it so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did um, please share it give it a thumbs up and uh, comment there's plenty of things I'm sure that I'm doing wrong on here so uh, comments would be very much appreciated uh, thank you very much and from Jenny's plot we'll see you in a month and I think probably from my plot we'll see you in a week <laughs>